Today, I'm going to tell you guys how to be situationally aware and why it's important. So one of the best ways to demonstrate this was I was visiting some of my wife's relatives down in LA. We had Ellie and we go to this burger place that's uh, near Disneyland, rated really well. We walk in, we can smell the, the smell of the bacon and the burgers. Things are nice. We're hungry, right? So we sit down, we order our food, we're eating. Uh, we're just talking and having a good time at this little burger joint. Then these, uh, these guys come in, they're wearing really baggy clothes. Looks like two of them walk to the cashier, the other two hang out by the door. And I was like, that's kind of a weird thing to do. Why are two people sitting by the door? They talk to the cashier and the cashier is, looks like he's just being polite, but then they start pointing hands at him and making a lot of gestures, being really, really angry. And then um, on the way out, they go, hey, fuck you and fuck this place. And then they walk out and I go, hmm. That's interesting. We keep eating. I'm there with uh, my wife, relatives. We're talking. We're sitting at two different tables because there's there's just not a big table for all of us, right? Then I notice that guy comes back in. The same one who said, fuck you. Comes back in. And uh, he sits next to the table, closest to the cashier. And he doesn't order anything. And the cashier looks up and he goes, uh, can I help you? And he's like, no, man, I'm cool. He sits down. And my wife and um, her relatives, her, her relatives who are around our age, keep eating. Uh, but I'm sitting there and I'm tense. There's, this guy's not ordering food. This guy was just mad when he left. And now he's back and he's not doing anything. That is putting giant alarm bells off in my head. Um, I don't have... Uh, at the time, I wasn't carrying, so I was like, the best I can do if he draws something is I got a water, and I, the game plan in my head was if he draws something and he's focused on the cashier, I can try and throw this and then close the distance and maybe, hopefully, I can make something happen. So I'm sitting there, I'm tense. And then what makes things worse was... I can see outside, like the sun's coming in, I can see outside, and this car pulls up, and it stops really abruptly, and people, and one of the guys who came in the first time is sitting in the back seat of the car, and um, he gets a message, he looks at his phone, he looks back outside, and I, I get really tense, like, if something's going to go down, it's going to go down now, and this guy gets up, he looks around, and I think he sees me looking, and I didn't know this at the time. But my wife's uncles who had grown up in the Philippines were also looking at this guy. None of us were eat none of us were moving. We're all just staring at this dude. And I think that I don't know if he was gonna do something. I don't know if he was what he was planning to do, but he looked at us, he looked at that cash and he's like, man, fuck this place. And then he walked out. Um and then he left. And I looked at our uncles, and our uncles looked at me, and I almost went, Oh, thank God. And then the uh, her relatives who grew up more so in the states were like oh what happened what's going on and it's i think just being in manila and studying uh cctv cctv tapes repeatedly about when attacks happen let me kind of clued me in and the reason it's important to be situationally aware is because it gives you time to create a plan right being alert and being observant allows time to create a plan so uh we were discussing what we we're going to do like i had this little uh I had the cup in front of me, right? One of our uncles was kind of closer. He had a chair and he, he actually had his foot on the chair and he was ready to kick the chair at the guy if he was going to make a move. And so it was kind of interesting talking about that and the little dynamic that happened. And so these are the steps to be situationally aware and kind of what the codes mean. And so when you're, uh, there's four levels and essentially when you're in your house and there's no, uh, no threat, nothing around you, right? That's called condition white, where you're relaxed, you're not even observing anything because you're in the security of your home. That's condition white. Next level above that, where this is where I am most of the time when I'm outside with my family is condition yellow. And condition yellow isn't like checking like, oh, maybe that guy's a threat. Maybe that guy's a threat. Condition yellow is just observing. Just like, hmm, walking around. Does anything seem out of place? Does anything seem weird? If you're... Uh, all at a party, right? And everyone's celebrating, having a good time. And there's one guy with a hood on in the corner that no one knows, and he's just sitting there. 
that's kind of like a, hmm, that's interesting. And you take note of that dude. So condition yellow is just observing. You're walking around and you're just kind of observing. Now let's say, um, let's say this guy sitting in the corner and you notice no one's talking to him and he doesn't want to talk to anyone. And uh, that's when I would start picking things up from observing. If you see someone who might be out of the ordinary, see someone who might be a threat, that's when you switch into condition or you start pre-planning what you might do. So in this case, looking around in the restaurant, condition yellow, like everyone's chill, everyone's acting according to normal human patterns. People are standing in line. Maybe, you know, the, the angry uh, exchange at the cashier, maybe that's a normal thing in this area. No big deal. What put me in condition orange is when the guy came back in and didn't order. That's when everything was like, like going haywire and we need to come up with a plan because there's something definitely out of the ordinary here. Um, so the plan was I need to close distance because I don't have anything. I don't have any tools on me besides the, the cup of water I got. And um, given the guy's size, he was like five, seven and not very stocky. Like if I figured if I can close the distance on him, we can subdue this guy. So that was the game plan. And then condition red is if the thing would actually happen where if you were to draw some kind of weapon or firearm or tool to do damage to or great bodily harm to anyone in the restaurant, that's when we'd be in code like condition red and we're like executing the plan to uh, stop him. And so in general, in your in your house, you don't need to be checking out if your your wife or kids are threats to you. It's just condition white. When you're walking around, stay in condition yellow. Have your hands out, be observant, right? There's been a lot of cases recently of apparently people are, uh, groups of kids are walking around with baseball bats and assaulting Asian women in San Francisco. So if you're in San Francisco and you see a group of kids with baseball bats, maybe you just cross the street, you know, you observe cross the street. If they start to cross the street, well, then you start to run in the opposite direction and find help. Like if you're, but if you're not observant, if you're just staring at your phone, you lose the ability to have time to create a plan to act. Then once again, orange is taking a look at um, something out of the ordinary and creating a plan. Red is executing on that plan. Now I'm saying this and I'm saying this in the video because there's been a lot of violence that's been growing lately. And I want you guys to be aware but you can't be aware if you got your headphones in and your head in your phone. So please stay observant, stay safe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.